Okay, we have different types of studies that are done. The two main ones are experiments and observational studies. So there is a very strong positive association between television sets per person and the life expectancy of the people in that country, which means people in countries with lots of TVs tend to live longer. Does this mean we can improve the life expectancy of people in developing countries by sending them lots of television sets? Well, no. This is a strong association but it's not causation, meaning that just because our relationship is strong or an association is strong, it doesn't mean that one causes the other. And that's actually what they're implying here, is that one causes the other, but it really doesn't. So we want to find some possible confounding variable in this association. In other words, is there something that might affect both? And one thing might be the wealth of the countries. Your wealthier countries can afford TV sets, but, the, but they can also afford better health care. It will affect both the number of television sets and the life expectancy. So let's look at some others. Here we have, um, we want to decide whether the statement implies causation or just association. And if it's just association, come up with a possible confounding variable. So more sales of sunscreen tend to occur when more sunglasses are sold. This is just association. And a confounding variable would be the amount of sunshine. Exercise reduces risk of Alzheimer's, claims a headline reporting on a study of elderly people who recorded how much they exercised at age 70, and then whether the person got Alzheimer's disease. This would be causation. because it is a study that was done and if we look at it, those with early not yet detected Alzheimer's are probably less likely to exercise. So we're working with people who we already know they do not have Alzheimer's, so they're more likely to exercise and it has nothing to do with age or anything. So. This is causation. It's an actual study that was done. Increased weight helps students run faster. Well, this is implying causation. And conf possible confounding variable would be gender. Males are frequently heavier than females and can frequently run faster. And it's an often overlooked 
confounding variable. Also, age. If we're talking about children, older children would run faster than younger children. But also, if we're talking about adults, your older adults probably would not run as fast as younger adults. So we have one more to look at. And this we're actually going to talk about a randomized experiment. Because only from a randomized experiment can you really have causation. So we want to see if ingesting caffeine helped mice learn the way through a maze faster. Describe a well-designed, randomized experiment to test this. Give all details, including the use of placebos and blinding. You have 20 mice with which to work. So we're going to randomly divide the mice. into two groups of 10. So one group gets caffeine. in their food, the other receives a placebo. We would make the study double blind by not telling the mice, which it wouldn't make any sense to tell them anyway, they, all they know is they're getting food, or anyone interacting with the mice, which group is receiving the caffeinated food. So don't tell anyone interacting with the mice. which group receives the caffeinated food. Of course, if you're working with people, you would not tell the participants who's receiving the caffeinated food. And then you're going to measure the time it takes for the mice to learn the maze then compare the results between the two groups. So that's how you would design an experiment that we could generalize. We're using uh, randomization in order to divide the mice and to split up the food.